What's the scariest thing in the ocean? Erica, what do you think? Um, I don't really know. I mean, I don't think I'm afraid of anything. Come on, the answer's easy. Isn't it sharks? Oh my gosh, no, no way. Sharks are just misunderstood. I'm Connell Bradwell, a wildlife conservationist in British Columbia. I'm Erica Porter, and I'm a fisher here in Nova Scotia. We are the hosts for Coastlines, a CBC series that brings together young Canadians who are working to save our animals, plants and habitats on all three of Canada's coasts. And today we're talking about sharks. Sharks are actually really important to the health of the whole ecosystem and Canada's coasts are home to a whole bunch of them. Sharks are a really undervalued group in the ocean. This is Danielle, a scientist, conservationist and artist based in Vancouver and she knows all about how incredible sharks really are. Few people realize that we have close to 25 different species off the British Columbia coast alone and close to 1200 worldwide. That's more sharks than you would think of, hey? That means that there's a good chance that there are some sharks swimming in the oceans behind me. When it comes to sharks, they come in all different shapes and sizes and they have a bunch of cool traits. Six gill sharks, which as their name implies, have six gills. Most sharks have evolved to have five gills and only the oldest sharks have held on to that sixth gill, like the blunt nose. And this is a species with a vast distribution that has been around for almost 200 million years. That is a long time for one animal's lineage to be around. Yeah, so that's why they call sharks living fossils. They've survived multiple mass extinction events, including the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. Erica, do you ever see sharks when you're out fishing? No, not really, but I have seen signs of them, like this mermaid's purse. Now, you may have seen these before, but they're actually way cooler than you might expect. A mermaid purse is a detachable uterus used to protect and develop their young separately. Think of it as the ocean version of a bird's egg. So this little shark uterus would have been laid on the sea floor, but you can often find them washed up on the beach after they've been abandoned. That's so cool. They're a little sign that sharks are around. I really want to go and look for one right now. You'll want to stick around for this next species. Eric is a PhD student based in Ontario who is studying in some pretty cool places. Hi everyone, my name is Eric St. Marie and I'm super lucky because I get to work with one of the coolest species on the planet. They live in the Arctic, they're the oldest living vertebrate on the planet, the largest fish in the Arctic as well, uh, and that's the Greenland shark. Wait, did Eric just say they're the oldest living vertebrate? How old are we talking? We are talking 250 years old. Greenland sharks are a consumer of things like fish and whales, for example. A lot of that is probably scavenged, although we don't know really the extent to which they might be also hunting live animals. It's actually really important to understand how much a Greenland shark is eating, so that way we can better understand its role in the Arctic food web. Right, so how do you measure what a Greenland shark is actually eating? I can't imagine it's counting its calories. Well, that's the cool thing about science, because we don't actually need to know what the shark eats to know how much it eats. Recently, we were able to get the first ever estimates of metabolic rate for Greenland sharks. So put simply, metabolic rate is the speed at which our bodies process energy. Ah, I've got it. So you measure how much energy a shark needs, figure out how much it has to eat, and then you can understand the impact they have on the food web. Exactly. But listen to this. Greenland sharks are in the Arctic, under the sea ice. So to measure the metabolic rate... We built these large tanks uh, in the Arctic, put Greenland sharks in the tanks, measured how much oxygen they were consuming over time, and from that we can estimate how much energy they need to stay alive. Okay, science is so wild, but this kind of research is exactly what we need in the ocean right now. While what we know about Greenland sharks is super, super interesting, there's just so much more about them we don't yet understand. Yeah, and that goes for so much of the ocean. And it's especially important to start answering these questions in the Arctic, where Inuit livelihood and culture is so intimately tied to the coastal environment. Well, we're definitely learning about how important sharks are for the ocean, and I've always been a big fan, but Kirsty is a next level shark fan. As far back as I can remember, I've been obsessed with sharks. This is Kirsty, a marine biologist and researcher based in Germany, but she's originally from right here in Nova Scotia. The ocean as we know it today has been formed with these animals as part of the ecosystem. 
Kirsty's love of sharks has taken her all over the world for research, but she spends her summers back here in Atlantic Canada teaching biology and tagging blue sharks. Hold on, how do you even tag a shark? We're actually implanting via a small surgery a very small acoustic tracker into the abdominal cavity of the blue shark. These tiny tags are implanted through a quick procedure. It's done by trained professionals and doesn't impact the shark's quality of life, but it gives the researcher so much invaluable information. This acoustic tracker, when activated, will send out these pings into the ocean, and these pings can be detected by the acoustic receivers that are set up under the water. When a shark with an acoustic tag travels close enough to one of these underwater acoustic receivers, the receiver picks up on the unique ping of that tag, and it's how we can identify uh, individuals in certain areas at certain times. Tracking blue sharks is critical for conservation because they are the most fished shark species in the world. And as we've been learning, the fate of sharks can impact the entire ocean ecosystem. Our populations here in Atlantic Canada travel all over the Atlantic. And it's therefore really important for us to understand their movements, uh, their habitat use, and see if it overlaps with any regional threats. People are often surprised about how many different types of species of sharks are in our waters. This diversity helps maintain a function in the ecosystem. This is something that all of these researchers have been emphasizing, how connected life under the water really is. And that's why it's super important to be mindful to take care of the whole system. That's so true, and especially because sharks are the top ocean predator. And as someone who has also contributed to shark research here in Canada, I can say that I'm so proud at the progress we've made to better understand these incredible animals. Thanks so much for watching, check out our other videos and don't forget to subscribe.